So having looked at unitary system of government, next, this topic, we are going to look at the federal system. And the federal system is the practical opposite of a unitary system of government. We're going to define a federal system. We're going to see reasons why countries adopt it. We're going to look at its features and then we'll see its merits and demerits. So in a federal system, political power is shared between the central government and the component regions or states. So it is the direct opposite of a unitary system of government where power is not shared. Where power resides with the central or a single authority. But here, power is shared between the central government and the regions or states. Power is shared across the tiers of government, what we call the, the federal, state, and local governments. They are independent entities. <clears throat> so the power is shared. Now, I want to pay attention to this. The sharing of powers in a federal system of government is done and ratified by the constitution. And each of these entities have exactly what they do. Now, it is called the lists, right? Mm -hmm. For example, the central government, what it could do, I mean, what it is allotted to do according to the constitution, only the central government can do it, is under the exclusive lists. And it includes things like foreign affairs, the defense of the nation, printing currencies and monitoring currencies in the nation, immigration and emigration. All these things falls under the central government. Now, the state government and the central government, what both could do together is called, uh, is seen on the concurrent list. It includes things like education, collection of taxes, uh, road constructions, agriculture, and the likes. So most often, for example, in Nigeria, you would see University of Nigeria, University of Lagos, Nigeria, and then Lagos State University in the same state. Lagos State University belongs to the state government, while University of Lagos, uh, Nigeria belongs to the federal government. So both are sharing that same function. While the residual uh, list is left for the state government and local government. Some group will argue local government and the likes. So you will see some countries that are practiced that are practicing the federal system of government, right? So what are the features of the federal system of government? The division of governmental powers between the central government and the regions and the states. So power is shared between these independent entities. Each of them know what they are meant to do. Now the different governments derive their power from the constitution, right? So there is the supremacy of the constitution. And for the constitution to be supreme, it takes us to number three. It must be rigid difficult to amend. It must be a written constitution. And it should be in one document so that it cannot be easily manipulated. And then it must be supreme. But I must have said it before. Right? Now there is duplication of organs of government because what you find at the central level, you will see it at the state level as well. And at the legislature level, I mean, at the lawmaking level at the central governments, the, the lawmaking level is divided into two houses what we call the upper house or the lower house, the house of senate or the house of reps. We call them a bicameral legislature, right? There is the existence of a bicameral legislature. Take note of that. So in Abuja, we have the upper house and the lower house or the house of senate or the house of reps. So the matters in the exclusive list are left for the central government alone. We've defined all this once upon a time. Now let's look at merits of having a federalism. It gives the people a sense of unity political unity, regardless of how huge the country is, right? They all belong because they can participate in government. Government is with all of them because power is shared across the states, across the regions, with the central government. So development is faster because each of these areas can develop on their own without consulting anybody. Or like in the unitary where you have to like seek the permission of the central government. So we can say that in the federal system, local initiative is is allowed to thrive. So it encourages healthy competition, right? We're still saying basically the same thing. Amongst the states, amongst the regions, it brings government closer to the people because government is divided into smaller units, into states, into regions. It prevents the emergence of a dictator because power is not concentrated in one central authority. So I can say that the demerits of a unitary system are the merits of a federal system. So it allays the fear of minority group, feeling that the majority group will dominate them, right? So there is no fear of such because 
each group is uh, has the government's presence in their midst, right? So let's go for that. It protects the interest of the minority group, like we have said before. It leads to greater participation of the people in governance because power is shared. Every all nook and cranny of the nation have government institutions available. So government is with everybody. Everybody belongs. Everybody feels at home. So it maintains political stability ensures checks and balances. So the government watch each other to avoid abuse of power. So let's look at the demerits. It can cause interstate friction. So there may be clashes, there may be competitions between state A and state B, and it can bring up issues. So it brings sectionalism consciousness in the nation because the nation is divided into different groups. Now, don't forget, in any federal system, most often the country is culturally heterogeneous. You will have different cultures, different ideologies, different worldviews coexisting in that nation. So from time to time, there may be clash, right? That's why number two is thriving. And now there is unnecessary duplication of organs of governments, right? This makes it expensive to operate a federal system. So at the central government level, you have the executive, legislative, judiciary. At the state government level, you have the executive, legislative, judiciary. And they are doing same functions, even though in different environments. So it's expensive to run uh, uh, a federal system. Very expensive. But at times, I think it's worth it. There is difficulty in taking quick decisions because there are a lot of people to be consulted, right? So it's difficult. Right, so there's in most cases the weak, center may be weak because the regions or the states have the capacity to make decisions on their own, so they don't have to consult the central. So the central government may be weak, so it can cause disunity. Right, since it emphasizes more on the areas where they have differences, maybe tribal uh, differences, religious differences, ethnic differences. It emphasizes that it tries to bring it together. So most often these areas can be areas of dissent in the nation. So it can bring about disunity. So, but for me personally, I believe the federal system works better. For a country that is culturally heterogeneous, it is very important to recognize these differences. It is very important to divide and share governmental powers so that each of these regions or entities can feel that they are part and parcel of the nation. It's very important, right? So I don't know what your opinion may be. If you have any view to share, put it in the comment section, but don't forget we looked at the following, meaning of federalism, reasons for adopting it, its features, its merits and demerits, right? I don't think we discussed reasons for adopting it, but I mentioned it. For example, one of the reasons why we adopt federalism is because of uh, the environment is culturally heterogeneous. So uh, they are different, different culture, different language, different history, but they came together to form a nation. So you must put that into consideration and share governmental powers so that each of these different entities, cultural, culturally different entities, can feel that they have a stake in the nation, right? It's very important. So this is one of the reasons why you adopt federal system. There is, the land mass is huge. It's a big country. Look at USA. Look at Nigeria. Look at India. Look at Australia. So you have to adopt a system of government that can make these different uh, entities across this huge landmass to feel that they belong to this system, that they are part and parcel of this system, right? So I'm going to rest my case here. If you have any question, meet me in the comment section and we can handle it there.